Africa's rich and varied cinema scene at its continental showcase, the Senegalese statesman who sowed the seeds of negritude and leading literary lights from Rwanda. That's all coming up in today's show. We're starting off at Africa's biggest film festival. Fezpaku, or the Pan-African Film and Television Festival of Ouagadougou, is underway in Burkina Faso, and France 24's Fatimata Wayne is covering it for us. Hi, Fatimata. So we have heard that the security situation in Burkina Faso is currently quite unstable, with a number of terrorist attacks in recent weeks. There were fears the festival could be cancelled. So what's the mood now? Hi, Olivia. You, you know, this 28th uh, edition of FESPACO is obviously uh, very special indeed. The security context is everywhere in all, in all people's mind. Uh, we can't deny it. Um, of, you know, the very Sunday that we came last week, an attack uh, occurred in the east of the country, uh, killing 51 soldiers. But Apart from that, I mean, uh, as far as the festival is concerned, the, the, the people, the enthusiasm of the people, the, the public, you know, uh, the audience attending the movies, the theaters are always um, kind and warm toward us. So, no, you know, and obviously we have noticed that less uh, film goers are, uh, did came along here this year for this uh, 28th uh, edition of the FESPACO. But more, moreover, the, the FESPACO, you know, is a showcase. Obviously, there's a market here, an African film market, very important for the country. Yeah, it's quite the thriving scene. Now, this year's competition includes 15 films, five of them made by women. No woman's ever won the top prize at FESPACO, but that could change this year. Tell us more. Yeah, five uh, films, five great films made by women, and uh, no one is, uh, no one, any woman came to play a secondary role uh, here in the 28th edition of the FESPACO. But one particular woman has, uh, you know, a lot of pressure on her uh, because she is the only uh, Burkina uh, Faso uh, contendant for the big prize. Her name is. Apolline Traoré, uh, she made a huge film on the terrorism uh, attacks that, uh, you know, hit the country several years ago and still occurring here in Burkina Faso. Uh, the film called Sira. Just have a look on her film and let's listen to how she dealt with the pressure. In Turlidi and Dartaku, Jinga de Hori made it. And in Durobe, so you don't want to put it in Est-ce que tout va bien? I was scared because the, uh, in the audience we will, we will find some people who've lost their father, their, their mother, uh, someone very close. Um, and how are they going to feel when they see it? Uh, how emotional are they going to feel? So I was very, very, very scared about that. But thanks God, when I showed it, um, uh, this film is about hope. It's really about resilience. And that's, that's the message that I wanted to, to give in the film. And uh, thanks God, when the film came out, um, I think that this is what they got, you know? And I'm, I'm so grateful and I'm so happy that they received this film the way I wanted it to be received. Well, we'll definitely be looking out for her. But Fatimata, the festival's drawing to a close. You've seen a lot of films, but what's your favorite so far? My favorite is the blue captain of the Moroccan um, director Miriam Tuzani. This is a poor marvel, Olivia, and uh, a masterpiece in the making, directing, writing, and acting. Um, Miriam Tuzani, you know, the, the, is. She just made a beautiful, one of the most beautiful uh, love story that I have ever seen on cinema. And it is actually a real love story. They have this, it's a couple, uh, Hilam and Mina. They share three secrets. One, he's homosexual. The second one, uh, she is sick. And the third one, that they share a profound, deep and beautiful love together. OK, well, let's get a look at that film. This is Mariam Tuzani's Bleu du Kefton. Oh, you're a dick. 
في بالها جبال حرفة بالصح ما بقى حتى واحد باغي يطحن من حرفة عالية مينا 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 Well, Fatimata, thanks so much for that roundup, and do enjoy the end of the festival. Remember, you can catch our full-length interview with Mariam Tuzani in our special show from Morocco. That'll be broadcast here on France 24 on March 17th, and it will be available on our website too. To Rwanda now, where after a successful first edition last year, the International Francophone Book Fair is back. The idea is to promote literature written in French and build bridges in the publishing sector for the many countries where the language is present in Africa. Our correspondent in Kigali has been speaking to the event's authors and organisers. This report is from Clément Diroma. Fontadramé published our first novel during the literary season in France last September. This French teacher is travelling to Rwanda for the first time to meet other authors and especially female writers. The festival gives pride of place to female authors. While we have generally put authors forward, here there are many female authors who are younger and who bring a different perspective to these paths and even to literature. I think that the theme of exile, of travel, of departure is very important in these encounters. For four days, Kigali welcomes African and European writers. At the heart of this book fair, the history of the continent and that, still very painful, of Rwanda. I believe I can no longer speak. I can now write what I should have said, and I think everyone can do it. Yolande Mukagasana is a survivor of the 1994 Tutsi genocide and now encourages the younger generation to speak out. Today, many Rwandans are writing their story, and I support that. No one can tell my story more than myself. Recently, the warming of diplomatic ties between Paris and Kigali has favored cultural exchanges and encouraged the learning of French. Yet less than 10% of Rwandans speak this language, according to several studies. That's why the book fair has chosen to highlight books written in French. Bringing authors coming from Djibouti, Algeria, Guinea or France here allows Rwandans to reactivate this storytelling space. And they say to themselves, we like this event, can we organize meetings more often? The public will also get to meet Senegal's Mohamed Bougar Sarr, the first writer from Sub-Saharan Africa to win the prestigious Goncourt Award. To an exhibition in Paris now that dives into the life of statesman Leopold Sédar Senghor. The Cape Henley Museum has brought together artefacts that tell us more about Senegal's first president. It's called Senghor and the Arts, Reimagining Universalism. Senghor was a pioneer of a political and literary movement called Negritude, and his influence spread far beyond his own corner of West Africa. Florence Gaillard and Nick Rushworth tell us more. It is a tribute to the professor, the president, and the poet. The Cape Henley Jacques Chirac Museum on Paris's left bank looks back at Leopold Sédar Senghor's life and legacy. Born in 1906, he went to high school in Paris with the future French president Georges Pompidou and went on in the interwar years to create the concept of negritude, blackness, with another classmate, Aimé Césaire. Blackness is not about closing in on yourself. It's not racism. Blackness, on the contrary, is openness to the world, to all the contributions made by other civilizations, because we think that any great civilization is a mix of races. Photos and archives explore the culture policy of the man who, in 1960, became Senegal's first president at the end of French colonial rule. He set up an art school, a national theater, and the dynamic museum, among a series of cultural projects. Senghor saw cultural freedom as an essential condition for political liberation. That explains the importance of a major pan-African festival in the years following independence in African countries. It was held in April 1966 in Dakar. It featured 600 artworks by black artists worldwide, among those attending, Duke Ellington and the American dancer Catherine Dunham, 
Forty-five countries were represented at what was the first World Festival of Negro Arts. Senghor saw artists as the best ambassadors for Senegal. He sent paintings abroad and set up tapestry production to show off work designed by Senegal's leading artists. Production at a tapestry factory was used to distribute Senegalese modern arts around the world, making tapestries of works by artists of the Dakar school. They were often offered as diplomatic gifts and were part of Senghor's cultural diplomacy. The exhibition in Paris runs till the 19th of November, about a man who at the end of his life said, all he wanted to leave behind was his poetry. We're wrapping up the show with a festival here in Paris that gives us a taste of one of Africa's most vibrant urban centres, Kigali. Afri Capital is taking place throughout the month of March with concerts, drama, cinema and dance that bring Rwandan talent to the Goutte d'Or neighbourhood in northern Paris. One of those shows is a contemporary dance creation named L'Autre et Moi, or Me and My Other. That's on at the Lavoir Moderne venue. We'll leave you with a preview. Otherwise, do remember you can get more arts and culture on our website and our social media too. Do stay with us though. There's more news coming up on France 24 in just a moment. On France 24, watch exclusive interviews with the world's most influential personalities. We need to act together because we're protecting our freedom. Encounters with key political leaders. La quiétude, elle est extreme. Leading figures from the worlds of culture, sport and science. La science, la recherche, la découverte, le progrès, c'est important, c'est pas, pas des mots qui sont vides. Whatever you think is right, you can do. Watch the interview, a meeting of ideas on France 24 and France24.com. Liberté, égalité, actualité.